Hi everyone, I'm Ian Simpson from Philips Medicines. Uh, it's a pleasure to give you this tech talk and thanks very much for attending the session. I'm going to talk about electromechanical auto injectors and I'm going to talk about why we believe they're a versatile platform for diverse uh, injectable drug delivery portfolios. The, the flow of the, of the presentation will be as follows. I'll talk a bit about platforms themselves. I'll talk about technology options uh, for auto injector platforms. I'll then introduce the RE Smart Auto Injector, which is the electromechanical auto injector that we've been working on at Phyllis Medicines. And then I'm going to devote the rest of the talk to talking about high concentration drug formulations, which is a promising area for delivering high drug payloads. Uh, I'll then talk about injection force requirements for those, for those types of formulations, and I'll draw some conclusions from that at the end of the talk. So if we look at the development of auto injectors over the past 20 years, um, you can see that a large majority of those are, are based upon device platforms. In fact, from our analysis, only four of those products that have been launched, you could say, are a, a, a sort of development and manufacture for a single drug product. All the other ones, so around 60 different auto injectors, are part of a platform. So device developments that have been done for multiple drug formulations. So why is that? There's a number of reasons that drive that. One is about cost. Uh, obviously, if you can share the development cost across multiple drugs, the cost for each of those developments is proportionately less. And perhaps more importantly, you can reduce regulatory risk. If the device has been approved for one drug, it's probably going to be easy to prove, approve it for future drugs. So it gives confidence uh, that that approval process will become easier. And then the final element of this is that Platforms accelerate time to market and allow decisions to be made later around device options and align more closely with the clinical development and the critical path within the clinical development process. They also allow new drugs such as biosimilars to enter the market more quickly. If you want to consider the different types of auto injectors, then one way of looking at this is to define them as to whether they're reusable or disposable and whether they are electromechanical or non-electromechanical. Uh, and I've used the term electromechanical to differentiate whether there's naturally electronics in the device or not. Uh, and if we just look at those categories in a little bit more detail, the most common area is the non-electromechanical disposable auto injector segment. And in most cases, in nearly all cases, that is spring-based devices uh, that fall into that category. And that's the majority of the market today. If we move up and we look at uh, reusable non-electromechanical devices, again, principally mechanical solutions, spring-based solutions. Uh, there are a number of devices already in the market. The Autoject 2 has been used on a number of different drug combinations. And more recently, we've seen devices like Qfinity be developed to address that space. If we look at the top right-hand corner, the electromechanical reusable area, there has been some activity there, but typically those have been uh, specific to certain drugs. We feel that our area is the first third party company developing a platform auto injector electromechanical technology, although you might say that the Merck Serona EasyPod device is, a, is an in-house pharma company platform because that's been used for multiple drugs. And then the last area on here, the disposable electromechanical market, really isn't a, isn't a sensible solution uh, for current drugs. If you look at on-body drug delivery, there are electromechanical disposable devices around that meet certain needs. But really, in terms of cost and sustainability, that's not really an attractive place to go. And of course, with those different options come pros and cons. And if again, if we start at the bottom left hand corner, the area that we're familiar with, disposable mechanical devices, so predominantly spring based devices, provide good usability. Uh, they offer a fairly simple business model because it's, you know, one device per dose. Uh, so it's integrated with the drug product. But more recently, some, some challenges have emerged or some new trends have emerged in the market that point towards other features that are becoming desirable, most notably connect, connected health uh, and you know, connectivity becoming important. And of course, if you've got a disposable mechanical system, you don't have electronics in that. You need to add the connectivity into that, either as an integrated component, as a module, or as some sort of add-on that you can share across multiple devices. And the consequence of that is, you either end up with higher costs or poor usability because the user has to do more in moving that connected solution around. And of course, disposable um, mechanical devices have poor sustainability. You're throwing away, you could say, the maximum amount of waste each time you use that product. 
So if we move up into the reusable non-electromechanical area, we can address some of those issues. The first thing about reusable is because you're reusing something, then you can reduce the cost per use. So you get better cost per injection. Linked with that, you get better sustainability. And of course, even if you've got a reusable non-electromechanical system, you can add electronics into that, which is reusable, integrated into that. So you can start to address connectivity within that. But there are some downsides. How do we define the end of life of a mechanical system? Resetting can be more difficult because if you're going to be resetting a spring, you're going to have to provide force to do that. It's another user's there. And ultimately, you like to reach a limitation on, on what, what is possible for a user to reset within a, a sensible and simple system. So we then move to the reusable electromechanical area, which is the focus of this talk. There are a number of benefits around that. Better sustainability because it's reusable, the same for the, the non-electromechanical systems. We can deliver high forces, and I'll come on to that later in the talk. Uh, the force is controllable across a wide delivery range, and it's easy to configure that force or, or to configure the device for use with different drugs. Uh, and finally, you can get better visual and audible feedback. You can incorporate LEDs, uh, a graphical display, a speaker, so you can have better sound uh, and better visual cues to guide the patient through the injection experience. But of course, there are downsides like all the other options. These products are typically going to be more expensive on a cost per injection than, than the other options. And of course, because you've got a durable device in the market, you've got to manage the supply of that device and also the maintenance of that device in the market. How do you handle you know, issues such as um, device returns and device failures? Now, those, those issues have been tackled uh, with devices that are currently in the market, but they do add complications. And as I said before, disposable electromechanical isn't really an area that anyone is pursuing with auto injectors, so I won't talk any more about that. So if we move on to introduce the RAF smart auto injector, so the device auto injector platform that we've been developing at Philips Medicize, it's a two part system as a reusable handset, the gray parts on the top of the screen, and then a cassette that contains the pre-filled syringe and the drug, and very much like the front end of a mechanical auto injector. It will take both one and 2.25 ml syringes, so it offers some flexibility there. Then in terms of its benefits, because it's, it's reusable, it, reduces the amount of waste for each injection by 50% or more, depending on the particular conditions you're using. It has integrated connectivity in the current design, it's Bluetooth, but it could in principle be other forms of connectivity if the market calls for those. Uh, and it offers a very similar user experience for those familiar with mechanical two-step auto injectors, but it provides clearer visual and audible feedback during injection for the reasons I said before. And then finally, because it's got an electronic motor and drive system, you can control the, the, the delivery accuracy. You know exactly what rate the drug's being delivered at. You can pause that if need to be, you can change that. So you have a lot of flexibility in terms of how you, how you operate the device and configure that between different drugs. As I said, for the rest of my talk, I'm gonna focus on the area of high concentration, high dose uh, drug formulations, which is, appears to be an area of emerging interest uh, within the market. Now, a lot of us are debating about what happens within the two to, to five ml injection area. You know, is that best addressed by, uh, you know, a bigger auto injector? Does that require two injections or a long drug, or a long body delivery system? The other option, of course, is if you can concentrate the drug, you can perhaps get what would be a five ml injection into a two ml volume, and you can deliver that in what looks more like a conventional uh, auto injector solution. So the data on the left shows the growth of interest in this area, both in terms of publications, but also in terms of approvals by the FDA of monoclonal antibodies with high concentration formulations greater than 100 mg per milliliter. But of course, there's a challenge with that. If you're going to concentrate drugs, you're going to end up with increasing viscosity. And the challenge is if you look at monoclonal antibodies in particular, as you increase the concentration, you get a very rapid increase in viscosity. So it's an exponential time curve uh, rather than a linear curve. So a, a very rapid effect as you go up in concentration. So, of course, increased viscosity means increased delivery force to deliver that drug. And that presents a challenge, certainly with uh, current spring-based mechanical auto injectors. 
And just to show that in another way, then there's a couple of graphs here. You'll also see these, these graphs that Bjarne Sorensen, one of my colleagues, is presenting a poster uh, with some of this data. So I re you know, recommend that you go and see that. But these graphs show the interdependency between ejection time, drug viscosity, and the, the, the injected volume and the needle size. So you can see what happens if you increase the viscosity. Of course, the injection force goes up uh, quite significantly. You can see to well above 100 newtons in the case of a, of a small gauge, uh, 29 gauge uh, needle. Uh, and then that may take you beyond what a mechanical spring based system can easily achieve. But if you look at an electromechanical system like ARIA, uh, we can deliver quite high forces. We set the limit at 120 newtons for ARIA. We could potentially go beyond that, but we've got to think about the container closure integrity. Uh, but you can see with 120 newton force, we can accommodate a very large range of different viscosities, injection times, uh, and drug volumes. So we see great potential as the opportunities for high concentration formulations uh, move forward. We see electromechanical solutions as being a great companion delivery system for those. So in conclusion, platform products will continue to dominate the auto injector market. There's no doubt about that. But different technology options for both single use and reusable devices will, will come more into play. Uh, and of course, they all have trade-offs as I've discussed around that. From a point of view of reusable electromechanical auto injectors, there's a number of distinct benefits that they can offer around built-in connectivity, better audio and visual feedback, and better sustainability over disposable devices. And an important point is the move towards higher dose delivery raises interesting technologies and challenges in terms of what's the best way of solving that problem. High concentration formulations have the potential to avoid larger delivery volumes, but may be challenging to deliver via an auto injector or require an on-body device. However, electromechanical auto-injectors can overcome some of the challenges around the high forces required to deliver these products and therefore create a viable solution for auto-injector delivery. And we expect that as, the, as increasing interest in high concentration formulations grows, that this will create an increasing opportunity for electromechanical auto-injectors to provide a solution there. So that's all I wanted to cover today. Thanks very much for listening. If you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Uh, and thanks for your attention.